And now I want to open up WordPad. So again, we'll move down to the Start button, type WordPad. If you're using Windows XP, remember again that this will be under your Accessories folder. And now we get to see that this looks very different in some ways than the other two windows we've looked at. Let's take a look actually at what we have here. We still have a title bar with a system icon. It tells us that this is a plain document because it hasn't been saved yet and that we're in WordPad. And on the right side of the it also has a minimize, maximize, and close button. Then we have something here that's known as a toolbar. It's a toolbar because it has little buttons on it instead of just being menus which are text-based. This is part of the new version that comes with either Office 2007 or Windows 7. This happens to be called the Quick Launch Bar. And there's a button here, for example, to quickly save as well as to undo and redo. What is perhaps most important though is you don't see the typical or the standard menus. In Office 2000 and Windows 7, they have gone to something called a tabbed interface. Now there's actually several words you'll hear. One of them is the arrow interface, one of them is the fluent interface, and specifically for Microsoft Office, they call it the ribbon. The concept here is except instead of clicking on a text name, having it drop down, and then having a bunch of flyout menus, in this particular scenario, you use tabs. So I have a Home tab and a View tab, and I can left click on either one of those to toggle back and forth. From the Home tab, I have several different things. I'm just going to give you some terminology here. A tab then has groups. So this particular Home tab has a clipboard group, a font group, a paragraph group, an insert group, and an editing group. Within a group, you have options. So if I go back to the left, the clipboard group has the paste option, as well as a cut and copy option, which currently are grayed out. In the ribbon, some of the options also have drop downs. You'll notice at the bottom of the paste button, there's a down arrow, meaning I can click on this and I'm going to see different options. In this case, I can see paste and paste special. This option will be grayed out until you have something copied or cut though, because you can't paste until you've cut or copied something. Even though this looks a little bit different, the concept is the same as a flyout menu. If I was doing the same thing in a traditional menu, it would be going to the edit menu, going to the paste option, and then choosing paste or paste special from the paste flyout. The terminology here though is going to the home tab, in the clipboard group, using the paste option, and then selecting the paste or paste special. Just like in a regular menu though, I can press escape once to get out. Many of these features are covered more specifically in the applications classes. For example, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint 2007 or 2010. But I did want to show you see some things that look a little bit different. As Microsoft transitions from the older menu features that have been around really for about 15 years, and coming into a newer age with an improved interface known often as the ribbon or the fluent interface. One more thing I wanted to show you about menus though, in addition to flyout menus, is that sometimes we get a dialog box. In WordPad, there's a small button just to the left of the Home tab. If I click on this, this is the equivalent of the old file menu. I can see that I can create new things, I can open, I can save, save as, and I can also see things like print. Now print in a normal menu would have been followed by an ellipses, a series of three dots. And when you click on something in a regular menu that has three dots, it brings up a dialog box. In this new interface, I can go to print, and then actually choose the print option in the flyout, and I basically get to the same place. This is also a print dialog. Now we're going to talk more about printing and printers and the print dialog box in a later chapter, but I just wanted to show you that a dialog box is a special kind of window. It still has a title bar, it still has an icon and a title, and I can still move it around by dragging it. Usually you cannot resize dialog boxes. One of their properties is that they are not resizable. Also, they have a property called modal, meaning it simply pops open on top of anything else that you have open on your screen. 
and that's good because a dialog box is waiting for you to give the computer some type of input it needs. In other words, if you're going to print a document, it needs to know what printer you want to use, how many copies you want to make, and all kinds of other settings. So dialog boxes are movable, but they are generally not resizable, and they are modal, meaning they come up on top, and you have to either cancel out or make some choices and say OK before you can get back to your application. You will notice that there are no minimize and maximize buttons. You either need to make a choice and say OK, or you need to close it out. And in a dialog box, you can close it out without making choices by using the close button. Or somewhere near the bottom, you will see an option to either make a choice, in this case to print, or to cancel. Sometimes if you're setting features, like we were with screen savers and desktops, you may also see an apply option, which allows you to apply the choices you've made without closing the box. While I certainly can click on these buttons, I just want to remind you that everything you can do with your mouse, you can also do with your keyboard. So if I press my buttons, in this case I'm just pressing the tab key, I will move through all of the options in this dialog box, and you can see that the print button gets highlighted and then it turns off being highlighted and eventually cancel is highlighted. If I ever got in a position where my mouse didn't work for some reason, don't think you're stuck. Remembering that you can always use your tab key to move through options in a window, including getting up to the file menu where you can choose to exit or close. You can then highlight a selection and then press enter to choose it. So now that I've pressed my tab key several times and I have the cancel button highlighted, I'm going to press enter on my keyboard and that cancels me out of the print dialog box without having to use my mouse or without having to make a choice. The basics of Windows with a lower W are always the same. A title bar with the system icon as well as the name of the application, possibly the name of a file if it's appropriate, a close button, and also if it's appropriate, a minimize and maximize button. We also can move the window by simply dragging it by its title bar. In some types of applications, you may see vertical and horizontal scroll bars that allow you to scroll up and down and left to right if the particular document is larger than the window size itself. Most windows are also sizable, and by moving to any edge, you can get the double-headed arrow and drag them to be the size you want. Often, we maximize windows when we're working with them, and that's just as easy by clicking on the button itself instead of fully dragging it out. Most of our applications and windows will also have some type of a menu bar, if you're using newer applications or newer operating systems, you may see the ribbon instead of the traditional menu bar, but the concepts are the same. You're going to make kind of hierarchical choices by first selecting a menu or a tab and then making appropriate choices from there, sometimes from flyout menus and sometimes from dialog boxes. Remember that dialog boxes have their own special little features, primarily that you have to deal with them by either making a choice and saying OK or canceling without making choices before you can continue working in the application. There are a variety of other things that you'll find in specific application windows, but that really is what we need to learn for this particular part of our course. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and simply close my window, but I want to do it in a little bit of a special way. I have just pressed Alt-F on my keyboard. Now Alt-F is kind of a universal shortcut for displaying the file menu. Even though I'm in a newer version of WordPad that technically doesn't have the file menu, Alt-F still displays the button in this case instead of the file menu. If you're ever working in a menu and you see that one of the letters of the menu name is underlined, that means you can press the Alt key and that letter to access it. Alt-F, as I said, is one of those universal ones that almost always works. So again, I'm just going back to some keyboard shortcuts here to show you that you can use the keyboard just like you would normally use the mouse. In this case, Alt-F displays the options that I want to see. Then I can press my down arrow all the way to the bottom until I see Exit. Then I can press Enter to make that choice. And that closes WordPad. And that kind of concludes our tour of the little w windows used within the big w windows. Now you're familiar with both the operating system and how to work with the containers that hold information, files, folders, and other stuff within the Windows operating system itself.